It's God calling. Uh, you ever have those days when nothing goes right? <laughs> well, this isn't one of those days. <laughs> but I have them at times where everything seems to be going wrong or seems like they're going in a different direction than the way I expect them to go. And You know, in those times, you just got to put it bluntly, suck it up, suck it in, get on with it, and get over it, you know, and get on with God. Because as you move forward in what God has chosen for you, and as you take each step day by day, and as you walk through your day, you find that He doesn't leave you, and He doesn't abandon you, but that He walks with you as you go through each one of your trials, if that, that's what it may be, or tribulations, if that's what it is, or your aggravations, if that's what you're in, or whatever it may be that you're experiencing, because God is there and a very present help in time of need, and it's not that God wants to carry us, although I love the idea of, you know, the picture of the sand, footprints in the sand, and that there's two sets of footprints, and then there's only one. But, you know, what I like better is that when Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, there is the concept that you do need to bear your cross, and you do need to walk after the same way that Jesus did. And there does come a time when you feel like you're all alone, but God is there. And that in those times and in those circumstances, you can always trust in the Lord. He knows just how much, just how far, and just what you need in order to get through your day. So always check in with them day by day. Always stop your day if you feel like you're out of sorts and spend time with God. Whether it be in reading His Word or in devotionals, devotionals, in prayer, in Bible study, whatever it may be. In all of those and in all of these things, He can come to you even in a song or a radio or a text message, or a person that has something to share with you. Painful preparation. Help and peace and joy are here. Your courage will be rewarded. Painful as this time is, you will both one day see the reason for it, and see too that it was not cruel testing, but tender preparation of the wonderful life work you are both to do. Try to realize that your own prayers are being most wonderfully answered, answered in a way that seems painful to you, but that just now is the only way. Success in the temporal world will not satisfy you, and it would not. Great success in both temporal and spiritual worlds awaits you. I know you will see this had to be. You know, when God speaks like that, sometimes, you know, people react and they go, weird, or uh-uh, or uh-huh, or whatever. <laughs> For me, I have no doubt, because of the way and the fitting of how my circumstances go according to what the Word is being shared, that I know it's the voice of my Lord comforting me and strengthening me and causing me to recognize that He has in store for me something beyond today that I cannot see, but I'm prepared today for what will happen in the near future. And I like that. I like the idea that God doesn't speak in King James all the time, Beth. <laughs> or he doesn't come to me in a miraculous writing of sky, you know, and comes and says, okay, this is God. Or that he doesn't always come to me every day, although it seems like it lately, <laughs> in the form of a hummingbird by his Holy Spirit and, you know, just blesses me with seeing it and knowing that, you know, God is passing by. Or in your circumstances, or he doesn't always come in a way that we can put him in a box and define him and say, this is God, and God always works his way, and God will never do this, and although some people say that God will never do anything contrary to his word, and I kept, and I asked people at the same time when they say that, well, that may be true, but can you find anything since creation, and he created it all, in Genesis, to Revelation, when he destroys it all, that God could not do according to his word, because frankly, I think he's done everything that you could possibly imagine, and that there isn't anything that he cannot do, because everything is contained in his word <laughs> from beginning of creation to the end of desolation. And I think, wow, 
those people really haven't read the book. <laughs> so check it out. Anytime that you hear someone says, um, God can't, you know, contradict himself or work contrary to his own word, just remember that just about everything that there is is in, contained in the word. And I can't imagine anything that isn't contained in there. And if somebody wants to quote me and come visit me, you know, or write me, sure, go ahead. You know, I'll, I'll discuss it with you. But when you know that, and when you're content with that, then you recognize that in little ways God is going to meet you each day. He doesn't need to demonstrate, you know, to you constantly his awesome power by the Holy Spirit, or, you know, bring you all these oohs and ah feelings, you know, but that he can come to you in the quietness of your own heart, that he can speak to you in the meekness of your own soul, that he can touch you in the tenderness of the most sensitive part of you that no one else sees and no one else knows, but only you and he goes there. And when you have that kind of relationship with Jesus, when you have that kind of intimacy with God, then all the rest is just a blessing. It's just added gravy. It's just wonderful. But that personal intimacy, that's something that no one and nothing and nowhere does Scripture say that it'll ever be taken away because God will always be there for you, for me, and He has always promised, or He has promised that always He would never leave us nor forsake us because He would even inscribe us on the palms of His hands. And when you think of that, when you think of that, that God would tattoo you on his hand. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding, it's not a tattoo. But <laughs> close enough. But the point being is that when you know that God is that intimate to you, and God wants you to know that he is that real, then why are we settling for anything less than knowing God in a more intimate way? That is what our goal is. That should be our driving force for every day, to know God intimately, day by day. Today, don't you want to know God in a personal way? A more intimate way? A way that you know that He's the living God? That He has you and me? in the palms of his hand. Hey, it's a corny old song, but you know what? He's got the whole world in his hands.